Hi everyone, welcome to the Power Chains event in the Encode Club Polkadot Club series. Uh, we're, today we're joined by Akala, Astar, Moonbeam and Fala, who are going to be giving us a bit more information about their Power Chain, how it fits into the, the Polkadot ecosystem, and yeah, kind of telling everyone how, uh, all the cool things that are happening with, with Polkadot Power Chain. So um, be sure to ask questions in the chat. Uh, we'll probably take some questions at the end of each presentation. Each one's going to be about 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, we'll, any kind of general polka dot questions we could perhaps take at the end as we just don't want to, to take too many in between but um, yeah uh, first up we have dan from akala so take it away dan cool thanks guys for having me and uh, it's good to see um, i was actually just with kevin uh, in paris at ecc and um it's it's nice to finally start meeting some people in person so um thanks for putting this together i'm gonna walk through um some basics around i, I guess i can kind of um, give us some foundations around just reminders around kind of what Polkadot and Kusama are both trying to achieve. And then I'll mostly be focusing on Akala. And then I'll mention also Karura, which is a similar network to Akala that we're building on Kusama, which is actually live and kind of starting to become fully functional now. Um, so I guess as a quick background on myself. So um, I'm currently VP of growth at Akala Foundation. We are kind of the main team behind both Akala, which is being built for the Polkadot ecosystem, and then Karura, which is being built for Kusama. Um, I've been here since February 1st, so I think around five or six months. Prior to this, I spent a year and a half at Web3 Foundation, which is one of the two ma uh, main organizations that Gavin Wood started to kind of push the Pro Polkadot and Kusama projects forward. Um, so just to get into this, um, this I wanted to just introduce the team. Um, I think uh, most people might know, I don't know, Betty's um, been kind of out there quite a bit recently, um, but Betty, Rui Tao, Fu Yao, and Brian are the four co-founders. Um, Betty, Rui Tao, and Brian are all based in New Zealand, and uh, Fu Yao is based in China, so he's also the um, founder of Poker Wallet. so those teams, um, our two teams kind of interact quite a bit together. Brian's our CTO, he's, he's one of the top substrate developers in the world. He's leading something called the Substrate Developer Academy that hopefully you guys on the call have heard about if you're developers. Um, and if not, definitely just Google that, Substrate Developer Academy. It's kind of a boot camp for people who want to learn more about um, building with Substrate. And I know for a fact that our team has hired people directly out of that program, and I think other people are as well. So definitely one to um, a program to keep your eye on. Um, just some of our backers, so Coinbase, Pantera, Polychain, many others have helped us kind of get to where we are today. Um, so I, I know many of you probably have the background of what Polkadot is, this multi-chain um, kind of universe that mostly does two things. Polkadot connects blockchains together, so interoperability, and then it secures blockchains. So the proof of stake validator network on Polkadot is providing, is going to provide security to any parachain that connects to Polkadot, including Akala. Um, what Akala is, is it's, it's two things. This is a layer one blockchain equivalent to Bitcoin, Solana, Ethereum, and, um, and others. Um, and it's also an application layer that we've built on top of our own blockchain to kind of showcase what the, um, this DeFi optimized parachain can do. Here's a look at the tech stack from Polkadot up. So Polkadot being what we refer, refer to as layer zero, you may have heard other speakers talk about this. Um, and then going up a level, here's Akala. And when we say that Akala is optimized for DeFi, we literally mean that the core blockchain itself is built specifically for DeFi. So our products that I'll mention are our decentralized exchange, our liquid dot staking, AUSD stablecoin and others are substrate pallets built into the blockchain itself. Um, the other, the other um, you know, key kind of feature dimension is the Akala EVM. So this is going to be an environment for people to build um, Ethereum compatible applications within Akala. Um, it's, I would say, I think Brian said it's about 99% compatible with Ethereum. The reason why we didn't make it 100% Ethereum is because we wanted to optimize a little bit more for substrate since we think that's kind of where the, the everything is headed. And this allows us to customize um, certain features for DeFi. So for example, bring your own gas is something that's gonna add a lot of kind of flexibility and ease of use to users. And what that would look like is if you, once the Ethereum bridge is built, 
Um, say you're bringing over wrapped ETH to Akala for the first time ever, and you're looking to use that maybe in the DEX for a, a simple swap from ETH to, to DOT. Your wallet, your polkadot.js extension will have wrapped ETH in it and nothing else because you probably don't know about ACA, you may not have it. Um, and what this bring your own gas allows people to do is just pay the transaction fee for that first trade for DOT with the wrapped ETH that's already in your wallet. So you don't have to go out and, and worry about getting ACA. Um, and then going up a level here, the applications that we've built, this is already live on testnet at apps.akala.network. And you can go in and get testnet tokens pretty easily and try this out. But even better, um, our, our Kusama-based network called Karura, that's K-A-R-U-R-A. -R -R um, this network is live. So you can actually go today, if you bring KSM or KAR over to um, the Karura network, you can try out the, the live decentralized exchange. The stable coin is going live any, any hour now. Um, and then liquid KSM staking will be starting soon. So the Karura applications are at apps.karura.network. And I'll get into that a little bit more later. Um, I've kind of mentioned the three of these as our core products already. The Akala Treasury is one other thing that I'll mention. Um, in your previous presentations, hopefully whoever talked about Polkadot maybe mentioned um, parachain slot auctions. This is the process you have to go through in order to win a slot on Polkadot to launch your parachain. Um, we have the Akala Treasury on chain that will continue to build up both native assets, which is ACA, and then foreign assets, which is things like DOT. And our goal with this is to become self-sustainable. So the Akala Treasury will have a pretty large and substantial amount of DOT in it that we can use to, to make sure that we have sustainability in the future to secure these future slots through um, parachain slot auctions. Um, I'll go through this very quickly. So back when the Akala team, so the four that I showed on the slide earlier, when they were coming in to build um, Akala, they didn't just come to Polkadot without looking elsewhere. They evaluated every other option out there, including deeply evaluating Ethereum and Cosmos and others. Uh, some of the main reasons why they chose to build in the Polkadot ecosystem is because Number one, the security, plug and play security. So you come in and like I said, you, you get to inherit the existing security setup of Polkadot. And probably the second biggest reason is Substrate. So you all will be getting um, pr probably pretty deeply into Substrate, but the, the flexibility that this offers to developers building these blockchains, um, they, I don't think they were able to find elsewhere. Um, I guess a, a couple other things to mention. Everything else I think is pretty pretty clear here, but this self upgradability is is one that I think is underappreciated by people. Um, it's actually kind of good timing where it's the day of the Ethereum hard fork. Um, I've seen people like exchanges had to send emails out to people warning them about this. There's going to be um, delays. It's causing quite a bit of effort and and frankly a little bit of a mess among the Ethereum community. With Polkadot, this is as simple as just making an upgrade, voting on it, and pushing the upgrade live. And we've done this, I believe, 24 times since Polkadot launched just a year ago, the equivalent to what Ethereum's doing today with this hard fork. So we don't have to hard fork our networks at the Polkadot layer. And then at the parachain layer, if Akala is going to be making an upgrade to our chain, we don't have to do a hard fork. We can continuously upgrade. So this is going to lead to I think a pretty rapid um, rate of innovation compared to networks who may need to constantly do hard forks. Um, just a quick look at the UI. So this is what you'll see if you go to our, our testnet, up, our testnet uh, URL that I gave you earlier. Um, I can post that in the chat afterwards if you're interested. Um, I will get into this. I don't know how much time I've spent, but I'll, I'll wrap it up fairly quickly. But Liquid Dot is probably, I would say the product that I'm most excited about and I think has some of the biggest potential to be a complete game changer. Um, right now, I think, I haven't looked lately, but last I looked, it was like 11 or $12 billion in Dot are staked. And when you stake in a decentralized manner through, through Polkadot.js, you have to lock your tokens. So those become useless besides the, the returns that they might be getting 12, 15%. Um, with Liquid Dot, as you can see here, you'll come in you'll stake your dot and then in return you'll receive this liquid form of that called ldot 
So your dot will be staked earning returns. And then you'll all of a sudden have this balance here of L dot. This balance, I don't know if some of you have staked on Coinbase. I, I like their UI where they showed you're constantly earning more and more every second. This is how LDAP is going to be. It's a receipt for your underlying stake dot. So this LDAP balance will go up every day as my dots are earning interest. But the other thing that you can do is it's liquid. So you can go and use this for additional gains or returns in DeFi. So you could take out maybe half of it, take half of your LDAP and mint the stable coin. And then go to the DEX and become a liquidity provider for the LDOT and AUSD pair and earn liquidity provider rewards for that. So this is going to unlock billions of dollars in liquidity for DOTs in, in the Akala ecosystem. But then I also want to mention, we got a grant from the Compound team, and we're going to be building a bridge, which they called a Starport, from Akala to Compound. Um, this is the new Compound gateway chain that's also built with Substrate. Um, which is important to mention, but we'll be bringing DOT and LDOT over to Compound for their um, kind of multi-chain money market they're building. Um, the Akala Dex, very similar to Uniswap. Um, so last thing I'll mention, in terms of where I, I think DeFi is headed over the next couple of years, we're not fully to the point where the banks are going to be doing DeFi, um, but what is starting to happen and what we're already working on is um, fintechs and these, what are the, what they're starting to call neobanks are beginning to explore very deeply with, with DeFi. There's a company in the U.S. called Current, and Current.com is a fintech company with 3 million customers who have savings accounts on Current. And the Current CTO is a very forward-looking guy who came to us asking if, he could, if we could integrate with them to provide a DeFi backend for Current's savings account. So imagine... You're in the US, you open up your app and one day they offer you a new product called maybe Current Earn, for example. And you can opt into that product and earn maybe a little bit more interest. Maybe it's 3%, 4% when you're used to your 0.5% savings account. All of those returns are actually being generated from Akala and this yield engine that we're building. And those returns will be flowing back into US dollars into the, the hands of current customers. So pretty cool example there. Um, and last, so Karua is the exact same setup as Akala. Um, this is our platform that I said is live right now. You can um, test this out at apps.karua.network. And um, I'll paste also in the chat here, there's a guide. If you're not onboarded into polkadot.js, the wallet extension, um, you'll need to do that. And um, it's, it's fairly easy if you're somewhat technical, so. That's an overview on, on Akala, and hopefully you guys learned something new. Happy to answer some questions. That was fantastic, Dan. Thank you very much. And yeah, we've had a few uh, kind of questions. So Tommy's asked, uh, learning from the voting hiccups with Cora, would it make sense to roll out Akala with more features, e.g. AUSD, without asking for the community's permission for everything? <laughs> this person's definitely in the know. Um, <laughs> so yesterday we had an interesting situation we were actually 15 minutes before our crowdcast and we hadn't like gone over the slides together yet and i was like betty we need to go over these slides and she's like uh we just found out the vote was no on the stable coin proposal so we were like okay um so we had to kind of come up with what to do um but it ended up being a very good learning experience for for us as a team but then also for the community we, um, I think everyone just got kind of lackadaisical because we, we, everything, everyone just assumes these things are going to pass. But what happened was there was only like 10 people that voted. And then at the last second, somebody came in and with Polkadot's voting, or Polkadot and Kusama's voting mechanism, you can do what's called voting with conviction. So I can say like, I want my 100 KAR to, to count for 400 if I do a 4X, but I'm willing to lock my tokens away for say it's four days. I don't know exactly what it is. So somebody came in at the last second, voted no with 4X conviction and made the, the stable coin proposal fail. Um, but we, then we did it on the Crowdcast, we did a poll and like, I think 98% said that they would vote yes. So it was a great learning experience for, for even me. We, we woke up this morning, sent out an email to everyone. We got an email voting alert system set up so that everyone can, can go in and vote. And then we've gotten the proposal re-proposed. So this is gonna to pass today. There's, there's 
I think over 300 votes in there now for yes. Um, with the, the question on how this would impact Akala, I don't think that we would ever um, take a learning from this and, and apply that as doing it in a centralized manner for Akala. We will continue doing this in a community, kind of community involved, um, decentralized governance setup for every upgrade because that's how this is kind of how we will, will approach this. And if something does in fact fail and it had a significant amount of voter turnout, then that's the decision that the community made. But in this case, it was just a huge um, lack of voter turnout. So overall, it was a good experience for everyone. Yeah, I think everyone's kind of getting used to, to DAOs and uh, the, the kind of many pitfalls that can be, especially with kind of low voter turnout, having a, if someone's just very convicted against it and everyone else is kind of a, of a bit, can't, isn't positive enough to vote for it, then it, it can cause some failures. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. good, good, good to see the lessons learned there. Um, and Raphael has asked, so are Akala smart contracts written in Solidity or Substrate? So um, all the applications that I showed you, those are all live and built directly on, um, on Akala with no smart contracts involved. So there's no like Solidity smart contra contracts um, allowing that to happen. Our apps are more so a front end that allow you to access these the pallets inside of the blockchain itself. So the DEX you're basically using directly um, instead of using smart contracts. For Solidity smart contracts, when I showed that, that I can actually just go back um, here, Solidity smart contracts will operate within the EVM. And we actually are updating this, this chart, but this EVM also plugs into all of these other components. So you can be running um, Solidity smart contracts and applications that can also leverage the liquidity in the DEX, for example, or the stable coin. So Solidity work will be done here within the EVM. Awesome. Uh, and then we also have um, a final question from Al who said, uh, other than bypassing the 28 day lockup, what are the benefits of staking L dot over regular staking of dot? So, yeah. So there's the staking benefits, which is what he's, what this person said. So no unbonding period. You, there is a small fee if you want to unbond early. Um, the other aspect is the liquidity. So you have, say you're staking $1,000 worth of DOT. Would you rather have your $1,000 sitting there earning 12% or would you rather have your $1,000 earning 12% and you get an additional $1,000 to go earn more with? So it's, it's the fact that you have the unlocked liquidity on your assets, which is the most kind of valuable um, benefit to users. Um, so yeah, I, it's gonna be interesting when we, when we launch LKSM on Karua um, to see how much liquidity comes over and, and is staked because I personally don't see any downside in like, I don't know why you wouldn't stake on Karua. Um, I'm, I'm personally moving everything over when, when, we, when we go live. So um, yeah, it'll be fun, fun to watch. Awesome. Yeah, sounds like a lot more flexibility. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all the questions we have time for now. Uh, but thank you very much, Dan. Uh, and next, we will move on to Astar with Martin. Previously hey, called guys. Plasm. Okay, great. Um, let me get my screen ready. Sure. Dan, if you could stop yeah. sharing your slides, so Martin, I don't know if you can overpower you or not. Cheers. There we go. Thanks, thanks Dan. Okay, great. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, all good for me. Okay, great. Uh, thanks a lot for the introduction, George. Um, actually, um, it's great that you uh, you told the community like a star previously known as Plasm. We were actually like Plasm Network first, but we had to rebrand to a star. One of the main reasons was actually that Plasm was um, connected to Plasma. What, what was our first ex, um, uh, our first point to enter the pocket ecosystem to launch layer two solutions but we are much more than only layer two solutions that's why that's why we needed to, to rebrand from plasma to a star to get rid of the confusion of only as a layer two solution so a little introduction about myself so my name is martin i'm vp of world for star ecosystem 
and I'm pretty honored to be here actually at Encode Hackathon presenting this because um, for me, everything started here at Encode. Uh, last year, I joined the Encode Hackathon for Polkadot. And by doing this hackathon, I got to know a lot of projects in the ecosystem. And one of them was Plasm Network. So I joined the team as well. Um, I didn't have that much of coding experience. So I mainly was um, involved in web development. But I joined the team at the Encode Hackathon. We started working on a project. I got to know more about the team of Plasm Network. And before I knew it, I got like um, an internship and I started working for them part-time and now I'm working full-time at Plasm Network. So everyone who's interested in joining the, in the exciting world of the blockchain industry or Polkadot and um, do this hackathon, you will learn a lot of things and I'm sure you will find um, maybe a new career future as well. So I'm here to talk actually about a star ecosystem. Um, a star is a dApp hub blockchain on Polkadot and Kusama. As you see here in the, in the graph, like a star is connected to Polkadot, but we also have Shader Network. Shader Network is our canary or sister network on Kusama. So Shader Network, you will see it in my, in my presentation later on, is actually connected to Kusama. So our ecosystem is a dApp hub blockchain on Polkadot and Kusama, and we're supporting EVM, WebAssembly, and Layer 2 solutions. Um, and multiple layer one chains such as Ethereum and Cosmos. We are now working on a bridge with Ethereum together with uh, Chainbridge, and we created a bridge with Cosmos together with Secret Networks. Um, so why we created the Star Network? Um, actually, because the Polkadot relay chain, the security chain of Polkadot, doesn't support smart contracts by design. So it's needed to have a power chain that can support smart contracts. Um, the, the second one is maybe a, a weird problem, like EVM compatibility is everywhere. That is not actually a problem, but um, for developers, they can choose from different ecosystems, like you can deploy EVM on Polygon, on Polkadot, on a lot of, a lot of um, ecosystems. And it's for us as smart contract platform, we need to get those developers in our platform. So we need to do more than just be in EVM compatibility. So that's why we created something to incentivize early developers. And we created a solution like Dapp Staking. And Dapp Staking is one of our two staking mechanisms that are in place. The first one is very familiar with everyone here now listening. It's that like you stake your your tokens on a validator and you will get a staking rewards. But we created another solution like we offer dApp staking and a stat that uses stake on validators. It's possible that those users can also stake on smart contracts. And you can nominate then your favorite dApp, you can nominate your favorite team project and you will get rewards um, through block rewards. And not only you will get those rewards, but the developer who's also deploying your, their smart contract in our ecosystem, they also will get the rewards from um, the number of users nominating that contract. And we believe that's a very strong incentive for developers to choose for a star ecosystem. Another thing is that we are a multi-virtual machine. Like a star, a star supports now um, EVM and WASM, WebAssembly. So we see, you can deploy Solidity smart contracts, you can deploy uh, Parity Inc. and other uh, wasn't compatible smart contracts on our platform. And it's also possible now, like we have a library available where it's possible to, um, if you have a smart contract built in on Solidity, it's possible to call a WebAssembly contract. And in the future, it's also possible for WebAssembly smart contracts to call um, EVM Solidity smart contracts. So a little bit about that Parities Inc. Um, Parities Inc. is a language uh, to write smart contracts and Rust for blockchains. Um, and it's built on the substrate, uh, substrate framework. Um, and those contracts are compiled to WebAssembly. Another solution is layer two. So a star is scalable by, by design and we support multiple layer two solutions like OVM and Wallops. But we see layer two more in the long term um, in the Polkadot ecosystem because Polkadot ecosystem is already a very scalable solution with the power chains connected. They all act like a shard and this will set sharding in place and sharding is actually a very scalable layer one solution. And we see in the 
long term, that layer two will be needed in the ecosystem as well. So we already um, are at the, uh, have Ethereum virtual machine. So EVM is already in place in, in our test nets. Uh, we are working now on shaded network to be also be um, ready to be used. So we support various Ethereum tools in our test net like Truffle, Hardhat, Remix. So you can deploy your Solidity contracts. And we have an extended documentation with step-by-step -step guides um, on the website mentioned here in the slide, docs.star.network. Um, on the right, you see the menu where you can choose from different step-by-step uh, -step guides. If you want to use Hardhat and um, how to connect to a testnet, how to deploy those smart contracts, you just follow those um, tutorials that are in our documentation. We also have our Star Network portal. We recently launched our beta platform, um, but soon we will launch our, pro our platform with tap staking and a very user-friendly UI for deploying smart contracts on our platform. You just need to upload your Solidity or WASM contract and it will de be deployed in our network. And then you can immediately encourage your community to nominate your smart contract and earn rewards as a developer. Mm, then a little bit about our ecosystem. This is a limited overview of the partners we are working with, but, but this will give you an idea of some of our partners in the infrastructure um layer and also our backers are also mentioned here and what we are working on or, or what our partners are working on in our ecosystem some of our achievements that we had so far like um a star network core team we have received over seven no we have received seven grants from web3 foundation some of those are for development of plasma um ovm ink playground is that key rollups and so on we have a large community on different channels like Telegram, Discord, and WeChat. And um, during our first two lock drops last year, we locked a total of uh, 150,000 Ethereum on smart contracts. And during the crowd loan, we collected around uh, 130,000 KSMs. Um, a star ecosystem is not only a community-driven project, but also focused on technology. So we successfully had a token transfer between two chains with a star and a color. And we also recently managed to call a price feed on another power chain with Kalen. And we have some great ideas as well in, in the pipeline. So, but now, instead of going deeper into EVM, because uh, I'm sure that uh, Moonbeam next to me will be focusing more on EVM, I will start with more to talk about more about the power of WebAssembly. And we truly really believe in the power of WebAssembly and are working closely with partners like at Pratix Lab, who are making WebAssembly easier for developers to use on Polkadot in their smart contracts. Um, you can compare Patrick Labs um, in the Polkadot ecosystem as um, Open Zeppelin for, for Solidity on Ethereum. So we believe that WebAssembly will be the future of smart contracts. And in this video, this video with a cone guest with Gavin Woods, he was talking about how WebAssembly can be the future of smart contracts. So if you want to know more and you want to hear the vision of Gavin Woods about WebAssembly, I recommend you to watch this video. This is a great, um, great, great talk that he had with Coindesk. And he was saying like WebAssembly will be the future, but at this moment, EVM is the popular kid, is the popular kid in school. And it has a very, a lot of documentations available. So. Um, if you want to learn more about programming with Solidity, um, there's a great documentation that you can use. And this will be um, for those who want to learn more about smart contracts can be the stepping stone to uh, also learn about WebAssembly, to use WebAssembly in smart contracts. So last week, um, Hang Ying, co-founder of Fala, did a great video here at Encode with the introduction to Substrate. Um, but now you will, you will probably will know that Substrate is a framework within the Polkadot ecosystem, and it uses WebAssembly to produce portable blockchain runtimes. And uh, now, what's the power of WebAssembly? It will run by the same in instructions across whatever machine is operating on. And this brings me to a unique feature, also mentioned by Dan in his um, presentation about the forkless upgrades. This is possible through WebAssembly 
because the chains are given the ability to upgrade their runtime logic without hard forking. And by deploying WebAssembly on chain and having nodes auto enacted new logic at a certain, at a certain block height, um, upgrades can be done on the ecosystem without users even note and noticing it. So it's very great that, and that's the power of WebAssembly. Now, that's the power of WebAssembly um, on the runtime of, of Substrate, but what's the power for developers to use WebAssembly for smart contracts? First of all, WebAssembly performance is very high. So the language is built to be as close to native machine code as possible while still being independent. Um, WebAssembly, which uses processing time in browsers because of the use of small binaries. This can be a great use if you want to have blockchain technology integrated in, in, in like countries with very um, slow internet connections. They can still use the, the blockchain technology based on WebAssembly. And WebAssembly was deployed so that the code can be deployed in any browser uh, with the same result. And also the great power of WASM is that it expands the use of languages to smart contracts, uh, meaning that developers can write smart contracts in whichever language they're familiar with. And that's a great thing about WebAssembly and the power of the future WebAssembly for smart contracts. And we truly believe that this can be the future of, um, of smart contracts. And that's why we also support that in our ecosystem. So we support EVM, smart contracts as well as web, uh, web assembly smart contracts and possible and layer two solutions as well. Uh, just a quick one over the stars builders program. So if you're interested in doing this hackathon to build on the star ecosystem, we have a builds program also in place that you can use. You will find a lot of resources in our documentation docs.astar.network where you can see the workflow and how it will go um, you can even apply it with your team as well to, to get some extra rewards through us. So we will give you technical support if needed as, as network and fundraising support later on in, 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 uh, when a project is developed, uh, marketing support. And when you join our builds program, you will even get support after you graduated the program. So I think I did 50 minutes so i'm happy to answer some questions um if there are any and yeah thanks a lot george thank you thanks a lot anthony for having us here and uh it was great to be here again fantastic yes and thank you very much for the for the kind words at the, the start we're very excited for the the polka dot hackathon which will be starting in uh probably mid-september um so yeah we had a couple of questions we can take quickly so the first one was uh the, the Victor said uh, seven grants. Wow, what what were they for? Um, oh, sorry, I didn't close my. Um, so the seven grants were for um, the plasma. Um, we created the module on uh, pallets for plasma integration layer two. Optimistic um, wallops are one of those, and um, the playground, the ink playground. So we created something like a remix, um, but then for the ink smart contracts. And there were also one for Zetkey Wallop, Zetkey Plunk. Those are actually all layer two solutions. So those are one of, so those are five of the seven. We are still working on two um, grants that are not delivered at this moment, but are still under review by the Web3 Foundation. Fantastic. Um, yeah, and then uh, final question from Raphael. Uh, can we already use WASM with Solidity? Um, wasn't with Solidity, not yet. We are working on that, but it's now possible to Solidity to call uh, wasn't smart contracts. That's possible now, but we are still working on doing it the other way. Awesome. Uh, well, yeah, thank you very much. I think that's uh, all the questions we have. Uh, we also asked, is there jobs going at, at Star? And someone kindly posted the, the link to that as well. So um, that's awesome. great. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Martin. Thanks. And thank you. Uh, next, we will move on to Kevin from Moonbeam. Um, is Alberto here as well, Kevin, or is it just yourself? Uh, just me for this one. Awesome. Well, after you, Kevin, go for it. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to see such a huge turnout. Um, this is absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm just going to share my uh, screen here. And um, I just need to grant it permission. Uh, so 
I'm going to drop off and then rejoin the meeting. Uh, sorry about that. If this okay. is just the Mac system preferences. Okay, sure. No worries. Um, in the meantime, guys, uh, anyone that isn't already in the Encode Club Discord, you can join that here via the link I've just put in chat. And Zhao was actually asking about kind of good resources to learn Rust um, and Substrate. And so uh, previously, people, a lot of people have said that the Book of Rust is a fantastic resource for getting to hands with Rust. And then and kind of from there, obviously, the, the program that Dan shared around, which is a the Substrate Runtime Academy, is a, a boot camp for learning Substrate. And we at Encode also run some academies ourselves, currently about to start one in Solidity, and we'll be having uh, Rust ones in future. So keep your eyes peeled for those. Um, and yeah, just before we kind of move on to the next section, uh, we have a few more events left in the Polkadot series. So here's the link to the non-technical involvement one next week. And after that, we have the demonstrations of products one. Um, so there we go. Uh, after you, Kevin, go for it. Sorry about that. Uh, so we've got the slideshow up. Uh, so today I'll be giving you an introduction to Moonbeam, uh, which is an EVM compatible uh, parachain on both Polkadot and Kusama. So Moonbeam on Polkadot uh, is uh, our Polkadot deployment. And then Moon River is our Kusama deployment. And uh, Moon River won one of the first five auction slots uh, back in June. So uh, the Moon River network is currently uh, in its launch process. So we're a little over halfway through. And uh, we have governance enabled, uh, and we're going to be enabling uh, balance transfers uh, in the next couple of weeks. Once that happens, uh, everybody will uh, start receiving their, their Moon River tokens if they participated in the crowd loan, uh, and they'll be able to you know, participate in uh, all, all aspects uh, of the network. So if you want to follow along with the slides, um, please go to bit.ly slash encode club, and uh, you can follow along if, you, if you'd like. So just a quick uh, background about me. Uh, I'm a developer relations engineer uh, at Moonbeam. My name is Kevin Nielsen, and um, I used to work as a software engineer at JP Morgan. Uh, I've had an interest uh, you know, in blockchain um, for a while. Um, I studied computer science uh, and economics at Dartmouth College, and I've been working at Moonbeam uh, since April 2021. So for session structure, uh, we'll go over uh, what's Moonbeam. We'll talk about some things that are unique and different about it, and then we'll move on to what are some of the apps um, that are on Moonbeam, and then how can you get involved and how can you start uh, deploying? Yeah, so we'll talk about the unified account structure um, as well. So first off, uh, what's Moonbeam? Moonbeam's an Ethereum-compatible parachain uh, on Polkadot uh, and Kusama, and our goal is to provide the same familiar experience that you're used to in Ethereum, uh, but opening up the entire Polkadot ecosystem to you. So Moonbeam is based on Frontier, and Frontier uh, is the EVM uh, layer on Substrate. It's developed by Parity Tech, and uh, a lot of the contributors uh, were from uh, PureStake. And we're also designing Moonbeam to be scalable uh, and interoperable. And when we say that we're you know, your gateway to Polkadot, um, what that means is that you can come into the ecosystem through Moonbeam, and if there's uh, another parachain that you want to interact with, um, there'll be a cross-chain a message protocol for you to be able to, to communicate seamlessly with that. Um, and our name comes from uh, the jazz standard uh, polka dots and moonbeams. So we have a nice picture of Frank Sinatra here. So here's kind of a, a layer, uh, a picture of our, of our stack, right? So starting from the base layer, you have the EVM, um, but there's a lot that we provide on top of that. Um, including a Web3 RPC. We have a unified account structure, which I'll talk more about in a couple of minutes. And then we have a number of projects, uh, developer tooling, um, as well as uh, all the tools that you're familiar with, uh, MetaMask, Remix, Hardhat, Truffle. Um, and so when you arrive at Moonbeam and you're ready to deploy a project, um, it's all a very familiar uh, environment and experience for you. Um, so moving on uh, to the next slide. Uh, one of our key tenants is that, you know, we believe uh, the future of blockchains, you know, is really a, a multi-chain future. So we want to make it as easy as possible for teams to deploy uh, onto Moonbeam and have access to the entire Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, and it's also going to be easy to transfer assets between Ethereum and Moonbeam um, and other chains as well. So a sample of some of the teams uh, working on Moonbeam deployments, SushiSwap, Balancer, Chainsafe, um, and, and many others. And you know, it's important that 
you know, as a developer, when you're showing up to build a project, um, that you rely on on certain tool sets and integrations, right? So you're relying on oracles, you're relying on indexers, uh, such as the graph, covalent, um, all sorts of these. So when you arrive, um, you know, you're all you're used to it. And it's worth pointing out that these are not uh, like forks. Uh, so MetaMask is the original MetaMask. Um, you know, SushiSwap is the original SushiSwap, and it's not um, like a derivative. It's it's the actual application. So how do we bring Ethereum compatibility to a substrate-based chain? As you know, a substrate has a, a different architecture, and um, how do we how do we make that work? Well, here's an example of an Ethereum developer interacting um, with the Ethereum JSON RPC. Uh, they might be coming in through Truffle or through Hardhat or Remix, and that request is going to an Ethereum node, and they're receiving the response back. Uh, on Moonbeam, it's slightly different. They're still coming in through MetaMask, Hardhat, Truffle, and Remix. Uh, but before the request can go to the parachain, um, it has to go through Frontier. And Frontier, uh, the goal of Frontier is to make it so that you can deploy any Ethereum app you know, without modifying it. So it's 100% compatible. And so your requests, the requests that you're submitting to Frontier uh, are exactly as you submit them in Ethereum you know, without any changes. So an example of this, is uh, our Web3 compatible RPC. You can submit uh, methods such as eth.getBalance, um, and then it'll be familiar and you'll receive um, you know, the result um, as you expect. Next thing I wanna talk about um, is a unified account structure and uh, why, it, why it matters. So here's a generic EVM implementation on Substrate. Uh, this diagram is encompassing uh, you know, the account structure to make that work. And uh, it's a little bit complicated, but bear with me. Um, this is kind of showing you, uh, we have a user, let's say Alice. Uh, she has an account one, which is in the middle of the slide. Uh, she has a private key to that Ethereum address. And that's how she's able to access uh, her balances uh, in the EVM, interact with contracts, send transactions, uh, and do everything she needs to do in the EVM. Um, but there's also a substrate runtime, right? And there's also some interactions uh, that uh, we need to make with substrate. So what uh, Alice can do is she can map her Ethereum address to a substrate address. So she has a substrate H256 address. But the problem is that she doesn't have uh, the private keys to the substrate address. And we can't just get the private keys um, using just an Ethereum address. So Although she can read with this mapped address, any uh, transactions that involve uh, you know, governance, staking, or moving money around, uh, we need the private key for a substrate address. So here's where the second account comes in. We have a second private key, and this is a substrate style address. So we're managing suddenly, we have a substrate address, we have an Ethereum address, both sides need gas. You have to keep track of two private keys. It's a little bit complicated. So what Moonbeam has created is a unified account structure where you only need one Ethereum private key, and that enables you to access your balances, uh, your transactions, and your smart contracts on the Ethereum side, but it also allows you to interact with all of the native substrate functions, so governance, staking, uh, and everything else with just one uh, unified account that's Ethereum style, and it conforms to ECDSA standards. So if you're ready to build, um, here's how you can get started. Uh, on the left, uh, the first way is a development node. This is a local node running on your machine um, that's just for your development purposes. It has instant sealing, so you don't have to wait a couple seconds for your blocks uh, to get confirmed. Uh, it's great for development. And there's two ways you can do this. One is via a Docker image. It's only about two commands. Uh, and the second is by cloning the repo and then compiling the binary. And that is uh, a little bit more involved. Um, but it's a great option if you're using a VPS or if you prefer not to use Docker. And secondly, we have Moonbase Alpha. And Moonbase Alpha is our public test net. It's available to all. Um, and it's been running since September, last September. And we also have, uh, we've done about eight or nine upgrades to full, you know, complete upgrades to the test net since then. So we have some HTTP and WebSocket endpoints that are available for development purposes. And we also have partners who are building production ready uh, endpoints such as on finality. So you can get tokens from the faucet and you can participate in everything on the testnet. Uh, we have staking governance features live, 
you can submit a proposal, vote on a proposal, uh, stake with a collator, um, and all sorts of things. So here are just the commands. The most up-to-date ones are going to be on docs.moonbeam.com. Actually, they're docs.moonbeam.network. Um, these are, you know, all up to date, but um, I'll just I'll post the link in the chat um, so you can see. So it's very quick to set up a, a development node, either with Docker or cloning the repo. Here are some more details um, just regarding setting up your, your endpoints and how to interact with ether.js, web3.js, and Truffle and Hardhat. So it just involves setting your uh, endpoint, and then in the case of Truffle and Hardhat, um, defining the provider. So for some example dApps, if you just want to get started uh, without running a node, or you just want to check out uh, things on Moonbase Alpha, um, one of the things I might suggest is you can mint some ERC20 tokens uh, using the Minter app, uh, and then you can go to Moonbeam Swap, and you can trade them. And finally, we also have a chain bridge implementation, and this is fully functional and fully working. And this allows you to transfer any ERC20 token uh, between Moonbase Alpha and Rinkeby or Coven. And you can also transfer ERC721s, uh, NFTs that way. So really, really exciting. Um, the next slide is talking about uh, who's building on Moonbeam, right? Uh, who are our partners? Who are projects that are building uh, either on Moonbeam or building supporting tools? Um, and there are, there are many. Um, so we're really proud of our incredible partners and the people building on Moonbeam. And for a full list, uh, you can see everything at moonbeam.network. Uh, so next thing is uh, getting started. Uh, this is kind of like in order of kind of what I would recommend for how to get started. Um, first thing you can do is uh, hook up your MetaMask uh, to Moonbase Alpha, get some tokens from the faucet. Uh, then you can deploy a contract uh, using Remix. You can deploy it to Moonbase Alpha uh, if you'd like to play around with Truffle or Hardhat, and then uh, try deploying a contract uh, using Ethereum libraries. And then you can move on to more advanced stuff, uh, such as um, the ChainBridge implementation, uh, looking at indexers and the graph, or also um, using uh, our oracles. And we hope that you get in touch with us. Uh, we have a Telegram and a Discord. The Discord is more technical focused uh, for discussions such as these. And uh, we have a variety of other social channels. So th thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kevin. That was a, a great presentation. Um, and it's good to see actually Eve sign on your, your list of partners. Uh, they were finished fourth place in our, our last hackathon as well. So that was good to see. Um, That's amazing. They were, yeah. uh, they were also, I think, first place in a, the Dora Hacks Austin hackathon uh, back oh, in May. <laughs> Love the hackathons. Yeah, it's a great way to, to kind of continue building your project as it becomes a a proper company is something we always we always love to see. Um, but yeah, we do have a, a few questions. So uh, Al said, what will be the max supply of the Moonbeam tokens? Sure. Um, so that is on our, uh, our uh, Moonbeam Foundation website. Um, so Moon River, uh, which is the Kusama one, has an inflation rate of about 5%. Uh, but then the uh, uh, polka dot deployment has a slightly different uh, tokenomics. Um, for Moon River, it's 100%, you know, community uh, owned and led. And then for uh, for Polkadot, for the Moonbeam uh, token, um, there are some uh, investor allocations for like a, a public sale so that people can uh, participate. Awesome. Uh, and Pranj has asked, the fees that I have to pay, will they be over Ethereum or the weights of Substrate? I think Ethereum or Substrate. Great, great question. Um, so it would be based on, um, I believe, uh, Ethereum, but we'd also uh, need to get back to you on that just to double check. Sure. Um, and is uh, something about the, there wasn't any explanation of the unified account or unit of account. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Could you explanation explain of, of how? Yeah, certainly. So the Ethereum uh, style address is going to be able to uh, um, control. Your, um, your the EVM side, but also the substrate side. And uh, we have uh, like integrations to be able to make that account um, structure work uh, for, for governance. And uh, because we use like the MetaMask wallet uh, for most things, uh, and that, that makes it um, compatible. And then for like the polkadot.js extension, um, there's a few tweaks that we're working on with Parity uh, to make sure that you know, that is, uh, is working. 
fantastic well yeah thank you very much again i think that's all the questions um but it's a great thank presentation so and um yeah now we will move on to marvin from farla uh, who's going to be to be giving their presentation uh, and last week we did have hang from farla who's giving a, a fantastic introduction to substrate uh, yeah. workshop it was really 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 good so i'd recommend um, if you didn't get the chance to to catch that to to go back and have a look at that um but yeah marvin uh, take it away uh, thank you, Judd. Uh, thank you for having me. And hi, guys. Nice to meet you. Uh, in last week, my co-partner uh, co uh, gave a very technical uh, workshop uh, present to you. And, um, and today, I will make more uh, introduce for uh, what is about like. And uh, I will present uh, here. So can you guys see? Right? Yeah, perfect. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, my name is Marvin Tu. I'm the uh, co-founder and uh, of Fala Network and uh, also the CEO of Hush Forest, which is the development team uh, for the network. And um, so first, <laughs> what is Fala Network, right? Um, uh, many people will like uh, have a, a concept about Fala. It's a book dot privacy preserving protocol, but it's not that simple. Like uh, actually, uh, we are building a computation uh, cloud with a privacy preserving ability. So um, the, uh, the the very original idea about this is that um, I don't know if you guys have the same same feeling like we uh, like more and more Silicon Valley companies are earning profit based on you know learning and mining personal data, and the governor begin to try to protect people's privacy but themselves are not clean enough as well and uh you know the companies like google or facebook are too smart to be uh, you know fine so all of this trend for us means means uh, like the world will need to exchange a lot of privacy user or inter enterprise data in order to you know interact the visit uh in a wearable way while maintaining its privacy so we think we can only build it on a decentralized network run by open source code and transparent gardeners but i mean uh how about the decentralized world goes on uh, as far as we can see, like most of the DeFi applications are using the centralized cloud for their front end programs, although the back end um, be already be replaced in smart contract, but the front end uh, and most of the data side are still you know, in a centralized cloud and uh, most of the proof of stake nodes are running on centralized cloud too, so that like Polkadot and as a result, we, we think uh, we also need a hardware level infrastructure for Web3 protocols so that the decentralized and privacy can be, um, you know, guaranteed, you know, for real. So, um, uh, so we are, that's why we have the idea about, you know, building a privacy preserving Web3 cloud, but it's not easy, it's actually very, very extremely hard. Because what this means, you know, in practice is that we need to through, um, you know, combination of blockchain and the uh, computation or processing um, uh, technologies, which we are using trusted execution environment. And uh, uh, we, can, we need to also make sure that the CPUs, even when they're outside the data centers, they are behaving good and they don't, you know, they can't be evil. So um, yeah, as you can see, we, we, we need, we have like made two major uh, key um, problems. The first one is security, how to make sure these uh, CPUs are security for the competition. And second is availability, you know, when they are not in data centers, in anybody's home, they should uh, be available to developers and uh, the programs running on. So, uh, you know, additional to serving the enterprise and, you know, the, the Web3 solutions, we need to host a full area of blockchain native applications like DeFi, DID, and beyond. And on the other hand, to the Web2 solutions, we need to uh, make enable the programs um, uh, hosting in a Web3 cloud. So, um, um, uh, so yeah, so as you can see, uh, we kind of like, uh, 
uh, combined with the best part of Web2 Cloud, the per performance part and the blockchain part uh, together uh, so that we can you know, give uh, the, the, the more fundamental level uh, solution to uh, the Web3 world. And yeah, uh, so uh, uh, the first part to make sure the servers can't be evil even when they're outside the data center, this is uh, like the first challenge we are facing. And uh, we use a blockchain T infrastructure and we separate the consensus and the computation into two layers. It means that the blockchain, the follow up will make sure the servers are following the rules uh, which controlled by um, the chain. And uh, the trust list part is also uh, guaranteed by the chain. And the computation layer will charge in providing a large uh, and good performance computation power. Uh, they are run off chain inside these uh, uh, CPU enclave areas, but they are controlled by the chain so that we can keep the performance and the security and privacy. And to make sure the whole system is trustless, as you can see, we have like three major uh, roles in the, in the system. Uh, first, uh, we got clients. Clients could be website, applications, API, uh, developers, enterprises, anybody. And uh, workers means uh, they are the, 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 the servers uh, providing in, uh, often layer of network, but they're controlled by ancient rules we call gatekeepers. So uh, first through end-to-end uh, -end encryption, only the clients can touch what's running inside these you know, CPU enclaves. And, uh, and the server owners themselves can't even know what happened inside this. And because their keys are management by the gatekeepers, uh, which is similar to validators in other proof of stake system. So uh, as you can see, the, these three parties are separate and balanced in these each other, but the data flow between them, uh, you know, very good Web3 privacy standard, which means the data owners can own and know the details of this data and uh, details, logs, level. Uh, data set and executors they know nothing they're like Jon Snow you know and the gatekeepers they take responsibility to keep the system most you know very security and uh, as security at, at least as a centralized code so um, yeah, so um, uh, as you can see uh, it's not a very fair compared but uh, as you can see, the performance uh, for a uh, uh, file network in computation uh, part is very, very you know, similar experience uh, for Web2 clouds. But the, 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 we, we are able to do that because we put the computations in off-chain and they are running in uh, these T enclaves. But on the other hand, uh, we are the programs running these off-chains, you can't compare it as you know, the safe, the, the same trustless level as uh, Ethereum or Polkadot because they are not uh, touring uh, complicated. So, uh, but we, we are putting them inside each TEs. So uh, this is why we call our server cloud rather than you know, chain. And uh, so far, uh, we are like the other uh, talkers today of uh, already being a slot uh, on Kusama. And uh, in our roadmap, as you can see, um, we plan to uh, uh, launch the color network, which is also our canary on Kusama. And we already made it. The, we will launch our major, you know, the, 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 the major um, projects or applications of ourselves uh, on it very soon. And uh, in uh, Q4, after uh, Polkadot begin to uh, the start auction, we will also join to, to so that we can uh, launch the final network on Polkadot. But the unique part of us is that even though we have two networks, but we don't uh, initial a new token, we use the file token as the only one for uh, both uh, color net and file network. And by the end, you know, by Q1 next year, we are planning to also launch a cloud platform so that developers and enterprises can use it as a replaced uh, version of centralized cloud. And uh, so far uh, uh, to win this cloud, you know, every page in a, a, a attractive well, loss of KSM on it. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, 
uh, uh, like other substitutes. Sorry. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. Someone had to uh, mute themselves. I was having a good time. No, it's a good background music. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, we, we will also take uh, steps to launch our network. So far, I'll be already distributing the tokens and uh, we already actually launched the bridge between the parachain into an Ethereum, but we haven't like announced the details yet because we want to like monitor it for two days, but we will announce it tomorrow. And uh, the next step, a huge step is that we will make the network decentralized and no uh, democracy uh, council running and uh, enable the servers to register and provide their computation power to follow which is meet. And uh, our uh, council members, uh, we, we already have some like, uh, uh, you know, uh, huge fans from the community, uh, from uh, their different areas, experts from, uh, you know, uh, in, in many ways. And yeah, the interesting part I want to share today is the servers to earn, you know, like play to earn. If you have any servers uh, reach the security level uh, is, um, uh, 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 in our standard, then you can, you know, registering and providing your CPUs to file networks so that you can earn some tokens. And uh, to make sure, you know, to make sure that uh, uh, even in the early stage, uh, every uh, developer and, 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 and enterprise is using file network and have a good experience, we need the network to be strong. So that's why we give out like 80% of token to the total community and 70% of the token to um, to the uh, server owners. And uh, yeah, so, um, and in Kala network, we, 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 we haven't, uh, we don't have a new token, it's a file token. And uh, 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 in the early stage, uh, every day we will uh, distributing uh, 60,000 tokens to all um, uh, servers online. And uh, yeah, we will reduce the reward every 45 days. And uh, yeah, this is a very, uh, you know, we are very proud to uh, you know, give this uh, module to uh, all uh, miners. It's a very you know, we, we vision uh, module. Uh, we call it value promise module. It means that uh, we will uh, distribute the rewards based on your um, uh, CPU's performance, your CPU security level, the, and even the historic contributing in the Fala network. It's like if your servers behaving good in Fala system uh, longer than anybody else, then you can earn than anybody else. And the, 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 the longer you stay, the better uh, uh, computation power you got. So it's a very interesting module. You want to try it on uh, Kusama first. And uh, uh, even though uh, we uh, haven't launched the uh, uh, mining system officially on the network, but uh, we already been through uh, three stages of test night. And through this test night, we've we already collecting like there are over 50,000 CPU calls uh, providing uh, prepared, pr providing its uh, you know, computation power to the network, which that's why we uh, we have the guts to see ourselves is a cloud because you know if you just have one hundred nodes you can't call your network is a cloud it's just a it's just a blockchain and uh, I I believe that you guys are very interested in you know, what you can build on Kala. Uh, we have like three major parties uh, you can build on top of Fala. The first is the cloud services, the cloud related services. Majorly uh, is a CPU computation. And uh, uh, the other part would be like DeFi protocols, computational energy device and data related uh, protocol tools. So uh, as a sample, uh, uh, we want to provide a you know, confidential IoT into DeFi protocols like Karura, um, the applications on uh, ASTAR and Moonbeam. And uh, 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 for now, we already have like two, two four major, you know, uh, product we want to build. The first is the bridges because using this um, uh, Web3 Cloud, you can easily build up bridges between uh, 
substrates and other uh, blockchains, we know that there are very good solid module for like BTC bridge and Ethereum bridge. We are now target on that. Although we will uh, we will be the first uh, uh, parachain Ethereum bridge uh, tomorrow, but. Uh, we will, we are not targeting on these chains. We are targeting on the chains. No one want to, you know, take serious time to build, but uh, using uh, our ability, you can easily build it up. And uh, second, uh, we are uh, we think there are a lot of like privacy problems in DeFi, not for the privacy, just not just for the mixed coins, but also like uh, if you are using the swipes or landing. Uh, if you are aware, everybody is marking you, right? So it's very dangerous. And if you are lending some sites from the protocols, uh, it's very dangerous. Your position is uh, transparency to everyone. So uh, we, um, and you know, there are also a huge MED problem in Ethereum. So we think the confidentiality, you know, uh, uh, tools or uh, protocols for DeFi is very important, and um, uh, we are also pro we will also provide a mystery uh, NFT, which is very interesting. We can encryption some serious data uh, into a box, and these box are related with the ancient NFT. So it means that if you own the NFT, you own the data box, and you are the only guy who can open and see what's in the box, for example, I uh, I have the guys to put my BTC private key into this uh, NFT box, and uh, I have the you know, <laughs> I think uh, the I will I will do that so that to prove it's very safe, and uh, for now we have two, uh, two major products on the way, and it's uh, already you, you can visit it on. Uh, and dot, uh, file dot network. The first is the book dog privacy hub. And uh, during this hub is like a white page uh, wallet, but uh, during this hub, uh, after the XMP is available for the, uh, the, the top five parachains on Kusama, you can transfer your tokens into a privacy version on Fala and uh, we will use the confidential smart contract to uh, mint out these uh, privacy assets. And on you know, other hand, uh, we are already launching the first parachain Ethereum bridge and uh, you will be enabled to uh, uh, transfer the Fala tokens from ERC20 into a color network uh, very soon. And uh, uh, at last, uh, so uh, how the developers uh, can build privacy applications if you have any good ideas on Fala. So um, yeah, yeah, so uh, uh, we also believed in uh, uh, Ink and WebSubly as a next uh, generation of major smart contract. So, and we think uh, EVM is not very a uh, capability for privacy preserving uh, codes or programs. So uh, we, uh, at first we will uh, enable the WASA into um, a CPU enclave. So it means that the, the, the programs you are deploying, you are writing, um, could be in, could be other uh, uh, language, but uh, these uh, web assembly uh, uh, programs will be a uh, deployment inside this CPU on clips. It means that all the data uh, and uh, the processing is not transparency uh, for everyone, but could be for the ones who owns this program uh, or smart contract keys, all the, the, the guys who are you already are authorization with. So uh, that's how you can uh, build a privacy applications uh, on Fala Network. So that's all, thank you. Thank you very much, Marvin. It's a fantastic, fantastic talk. And we do have a, a few questions as well, if you have time. Um, yeah. So one from Diego, do you plan to follow the W3C standards of verifiable credentials and decentralized identifiers? I mean, that's Web3 Council. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the, this question is very interesting. Um, uh, we, 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 we will, uh, follow the, the web three, uh, uh, web three C standard of, uh, verifiable, uh, credentials. 
And uh, uh, we are also very interested in exploring, you know, how to uh, keep confidentiality for the DIDs. So uh, in this in in this perspective, we will of course we will like cooperating with like literature or cute uh, to see what we can help with that. Fantastic. Um, cool. And uh, Victor has asked. So is your network Intel SGX based or AMD SEV? I have no clue oh, what that it, means. <laughs> this is a very professional uh, uh, question. Uh, the, um, the TEE, the trusted security environment in the real industry have like uh, three major standards for now. The first is uh, Intel SGX. The second is uh, AMD SEV for the AMD CPUs. And the second is ARM. Uh, but um, the uh, arms are not um, like how to say um, uh, uh, so standard in the industry because every like smart smartphones companies using arm will make their own T standards, which is not acceptable for a large development scope. So uh, in this perspective, we are. We are supporting, we already supporting uh, Intel SGX now, and we already support most of the you know, hardware in Intel SGX. And we are planning by the end of this year, we, we will support uh, AMD SEV. Uh, the reason is that AMD SEV is a young T standard. It haven't been uh, up through so many attacks from different security lamps. So we take it, you know, a while to watch how it performs, and now we have you know kind of like confidence to support it. But don't worry, you know there will be more and more T standards come on. And the Fala, the best part of Fala is that using the decentralized governance, we can support multi uh, standards, not just the one. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome, fantastic. Uh, and then final question from uh, Tommy, who asks, uh, Do you know when the Carla uh, transfer <laughs> function will be enabled? Yeah, the, uh, uh, we as, as I mentioned, we will take uh, different steps to launch the network. Uh, you know, in this week, we will open the bridge between Ethereum and Kala so that you can transfer the ERC20 Kala into Kala. And in next week, uh, we will have a series test for the TE mining. And after the mining is official launched, we will remove Sudo and election for the council. And after we re remove the you know final control for the network, we will enable the transfer. Uh, it will not uh, in days, but it will happen in weeks. Uh, don't worry about it. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I think that's all of the questions. So thank you very much. Um, and thank you again to all of the speakers, Dan, Martin, Kevin, and uh, Marvin for, for their fantastic talks today. Um, so in terms of kind of moving forward, the recording and summary of this with all the slides will be posted tomorrow on our Twitter and Discord. I've just put a link to the Encode Club Twitter in the chat there as well. And the next event in the Polkadot Education series is uh, a non-technical workshop about how you can get involved in the Polkadot ecosystem as a non-developer. So uh, be sure to come along to that if you're, you're interested in that side of things. And the week following that will be a demonstration of a few products in the, the Polkadot ecosystem. So I put all the links for those events in the chat there. Um, but yeah, thanks again to, to the speakers and to all you guys in, in the audience for, for attending today and making it such a fantastic session with your questions. Um, but yeah, cheers everyone. Mm -hmm.